Good morning, welcome to our uh, Wednesday morning thought for today. It's uh, that time of the, the week, that time of the year when I'm sure many of you are thinking about maybe trying to get some sort of break and things begin to, to unwind slightly. Uh, I'm taking my holidays, God willing, in August, so we're going to keep the thoughts for the day going until the end of, of July. And then most likely we'll, we'll draw to a close at the end of July because I think by then it may well have served its purpose on this. I hear otherwise from from some of you. That's that would be the plan. But this morning we're going to we're we're still looking at this passage, this incredible passage from First Peter chapter one verses one to nine, where Peter uses so many theological terms and pictures and ideas because he's trying to to ground the the exiles, those who have been dispersed because of persecution, trying to ground them back into the solid teaching of who God is and God's plans for them and the fact that they're not forgotten in fact that God has a plan even though they're not together uh, as a, a group of people would be in fellowship together and so there's this rich rich vein of theology that runs through First uh, Peter especially First Peter as he speaks to those who are being persecuted and are scattered throughout this world and we're picking it up again today at verse 3 where he says blessed be God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Uh, I love this phrase, born again to a living hope. Uh, this fact that our faith is a, a, a living faith. We worship a saviour who died and rose again and who is alive today, seated at the right hand of God the Father. And it's wonderful to know that we're not worshipping someone who died and remained dead, but we're worshipping somebody who came back and was witnessed by over 500 people uh, and was obviously witnessed by his disciples who then took that, uh, that encouragement they got from seeing the resurrected Jesus Christ into their, their daily life where they witnessed for him and spoke about him because they knew he was alive and that he'd come back from the dead. And so they had this hope. You, you can kill me for, for talking about Jesus, but because Jesus lives, I also will live. And sometimes I feel we, we maybe lose this picture of this living hope that we have. Sometimes we, we somehow forget because Jesus rose, we also through faith in him will rise again ourselves, that our faith is not a dead faith. We're not worshiping somebody who lived 2,000 years ago and that was it. We're, we're pick up, we pick up his, his teachings as if, well, this is what he taught then. This is what he told them then. Since then, we've been without him. Since then, we've had nothing. But we, we kind of like the things he taught 2,000 years ago. No, our faith is bang up to date, as we would say. Our faith is alive. Our faith is active because we have God's word. We read it every day. I, I speak to you about it every day. But we also have the Holy Spirit living in us. Jesus said, I have to go away, but it's to your benefit that I go away. Because when I go away, the Spirit will then come in my place. And he will be with you forever, Jesus said. Remember that? Jesus said, the Spirit of God will come and be with you forever. So we now have the living presence of the Holy Spirit, the presence of Jesus Christ in our lives. So our lives are alive. Our lives are on fire because the Holy Spirit is in us. The only way that dies is because if we decide we don't want to have anything to do and we, we walk away from our faith and we decide to stop reading our Bibles or stop coming to church or stop praying or stop trusting, then our faith begins to die because we have allowed the Holy Spirit, uh, not allowed the Holy Spirit to have that influence in our lives. God never gives up on us, but I know many people who have given up on the Lord and it's my prayer that those people, maybe you're one of them, will one day come back in faith again and be uh, brought back to that, that living faith that you once had. Because we have this living hope. It is, a, it is an alive faith. And if you've never considered Christianity before, I, I really want to encourage you to think about it uh, and to, to ask people who know. If you want to chat to me, I'm happy to talk. But to, to find out more about it, if, if you're curious at all, please start asking questions because that's how it starts. That's the warming of the Holy Spirit within you to prompt you to find out the answers you need. And it's wonderful to have a living faith, to know that every morning you open your eyes, you're not trying to get through that day on your own, but you have that, that living hope, that living faith within you, knowing that you, you will continue on this life journey of faith with the presence of God with you through the Holy Spirit, 
giving you the strength you need for each day. What a wonderful, wonderful faith we have, knowing that it is living and active, knowing that we worship a God who is alive and who will come, come or call us to himself one day. Uh, what a joyful day that will be. And so I want to encourage you today, our, our thought for today is to know that your faith as a believer is alive. It is a living, active faith, hoping, uh, which is another form of trusting in the future, knowing that that time will come when we will be reunited with the Lord and in his presence. But in the meantime, as I said yesterday, there's a work to be done and a life to be lived and a light to be shone before those who, who need, to, need to know about Jesus and, and trust him for themselves. So let your light shine today. Continue to, to live in this wonderful living hope we have, knowing that your faith is alive and knowing that we have something wonderful being a Christian. Be encouraged today. Thank you for being with me this morning. Speak to you again tomorrow. God bless.